Let's look at our text, Acts chapter 10. I like to begin reading in verse 19, and I'm going to read down to verse 24, and we'll look at several different verses throughout this chapter in this message today. Acts chapter 10, beginning in verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanying him. And the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. Now I want you to see five things here this morning from Acts chapter 10. Five things that I want you to jot down somewhere maybe in your Bible or on a piece of paper here today to better understand not only this story that we read about in Acts chapter 10, but to apply it to the power of invitation. Number one, there was anticipation that we see here in this story. Notice again verse 24, because the Bible says Cornelius waited for them. Now, that word waited implies to me a certain sense of anticipation. Back in verses 7 and 8, Cornelius had sent his household servants to Joppa in order to find Peter. Joppa was about 35 miles away from Caesarea. According to verse 23, once they had found Peter, he convinced them to stay for the night. The next day they got up, Peter and the men that Cornelius had sent, and along with some men uh, that Peter knew there in Joppa, other believers, they traveled on their way back to Caesarea. In the meantime, I can only imagine what was going through the mind of Cornelius. Cornelius could hardly wait for them to get back. I can see him almost uh, standing outside of his house with anticipation and uh, he's standing in the middle of the road and as he stands there he is straining his eyes to, to look just as far as he can hoping to see the return not only of his household servants but also Peter. He was so excited about the opportunity to to not only meet the great apostle Peter, but also to hear what Peter had to say. I believe that that is the kind of anticipation that you and I need when we think about coming to church on Easter here at Canton Baptist Temple. We need to have hearts full of anticipation. We ought to anticipate how inspiring the music and uh, the worship will be here on Easter. We ought to anticipate how great the preaching, how great the preaching is going to be here on Easter. We ought to anticipate how exciting it's going to be to to see the Holy Spirit work in the hearts and the lives of people. Our attitude ought to be, I can hardly wait to be a part of what God is going to do at Canton Baptist Temple on Easter. That ought to be the anticipation. Just like Cornelius waited. (laughs) He could hardly wait for his household servants to get back and Peter to get there so he can meet Peter and hear what Peter had to say. That ought to be the way we're just, we ought to be pumped about what's going to happen here Easter weekend. Number two, there was an invitation. Not only was there anticipation, but there was an invitation. Notice again verse 24, because it says that Cornelius, and notice what the Bible says, had called together his kinsmen and near friends. Now that phrase called together is another way of saying that Cornelius invited them to come and be a part of this meeting with Peter, right? I don't think I'm reading between the lines there. 
He he clearly says that Cornelius invited his kinsmen, that would be his relatives, his family members, and then his near friends, people that he was close to. He invited them to come and to be there for that special occasion where they would meet Peter and they would hear what Peter had to say. By the way, and I may be reading a little bit between the lines here, I see the power of invitation here in this verse because it appears that everyone Cornelius invited showed up. If you can correct me, you correct me. But it appears that everyone that he invited showed up for this special event. Now don't forget the statistic I shared with you last week. Here it is up on the screen. More than 9 out of 10 people said that they would most likely come to church if they were invited by someone. That is a proven fact. That's done by surveys. Tom Rainer puts out this information with uh, Lifeway Christian Resources that he heads up. And he says more than 9 out of 10 people said they would most likely come to church if, if, that's a big if because it depends on God's people, if they are invited to come by someone. Cornelius invited his family, invited his friends, and guess what? They all showed up. I believe that if we will also invite our family members, if we will invite our friends to church this Easter, maybe not all of them will show up, but my guess is a lot of them will show up. But here's the thought I really want to emphasize. If we don't invite them, we will never know if they will come or not. Of all people that we need to invite, it would be our family members, the people that we love most, the people who are related to us. And then we have friends, individuals, just like Cornelius had close friends that he said, you know what, this is too special of an event not to invite them to come and to be a part of it. He invited them too. 